In today's video, you're gonna get an over the shoulder look at how I set up my campaign settings for my Google Ads lead generation marketing campaigns. Within Google Ads, the platform itself, there's a lot of different settings that you can choose that can drain your budget fast and some default settings that can really cause you to be frustrated because your campaigns are serving in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through exactly how I set things up. And of course, it might be different and it might need to be tweaked depending on your specific needs, but this is exactly how I do it and how I run my campaigns. So let's go ahead and show you. So within the campaigns tab with the settings, I've taken you directly into the settings area and it starts here with the campaign name. So you can't go wrong with the campaign name, just choose a campaign name that's gonna be easy for you to identify the specific campaign name for reporting purposes and so that you can see your performance really easily. Next up is goals. So with the goals, you can choose to set your goals at the account level or campaign level. And typically you'll choose your goals when you set up your Google Ads campaign, whether it's lead generation, phone calls, form submissions. And in this case, I have selected phone calls and purchases and lead form submissions and I'm choosing the account level but you can choose the campaign level because some campaigns and uh, some campaigns might have different goals so if you have a specific campaign goal you might want to choose this one instead of this one Next up is customer acquisition. So basically you're telling Google here that you wanna bid equally for new and existing customers. But if you don't wanna go after, um, brand, uh, if you don't wanna go after existing customers, you can just select this one and then it will, uh, then you can make that change for yourself. In this case, I just choose to bid equally for new and existing customers because I'm okay with acquiring both back through my Google Ads campaign. Next up is the marketing objective. You don't necessarily need to have a marketing objective. This is typically what is asked of you when you create your account the first time and it's gonna ask you what your ultimate marketing objective. Typically what I do is I go directly into expert mode and I don't have Google help me determine what my objective is. So that's why it shows no marketing objective selected. But just because you don't have it selected doesn't mean your campaign's not gonna perform well. It's just Google is not necessarily going to know exactly how to optimize your campaign if you're using smart bidding strategies. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, it's gonna just depend on what smart bidding strategy you wanna use. Next up is a campaign status. For this campaign, it is paused right now, but if you wanted to switch it to enabled or I actually typically never remove, I would typically either pause or enable. So for the sake of this example, everything is paused. Okay, so now I want you guys to pay very close attention because this is where you're gonna save hundreds or even thousands of dollars. This is the networks part of the settings tab. Within here, there is a area for search network and display network. Please, 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 when you set up your campaigns, disable the Google search partners and disable the Google display network if you're running standard search campaigns. This is gonna drain your budget really fast. You're gonna serve not just within Google if you choose the search partners, you could serve to other websites that will drain your budget really fast and potentially get you to spend money where you don't need to. So please don't um, opt into that and also don't opt into the display network if you're doing Google search. If you wanna do display network, do display network separately in its own campaign. So just make sure that you don't have any of these selected. And then next, within the locations tab, this is also another tricky area too. And actually going back to the networks and really quickly for the Google display uh, and the search network, it's actually going to be a default option when you set up your campaign to be opted into search partners and the display network. So you have to make sure that you opt yourself out of it. Now, moving into the locations area, you need to, uh, select the locations that you want to target. In this example, I'm targeting the San Francisco Bay Area and just the Bay Area itself. You can do zip code, country, county, region, um, and so forth. 
You can even do radius targeting as well. So it's really up to you and how you want to target. It's pretty granular with the um, zip code targeting. And then here's where it's tricky and this is where it's hidden. So it's hard for advertisers to see. When you create a Google Ads account, it's going to opt you into a setting called presence or interest, people in regularly in or who've shown interest in your targeted location. So this is typically what it's opting you into when you set it up. That's why it says recommended. And typically whenever Google says recommended, it's probably not the right option to choose. Um, and it's not. So what this means is it's going to show your ad to people in regularly in or who've shown interest in your location. But this could be someone from, in this example, outside of the Bay Area. This could be someone in, let's say, Malaysia searching for uh, accounting services for the Bay Area. And this client only serves businesses in the Bay Area. So some, if this setting was on, then we could potentially serve to a, uh, a traffic in Malaysia. So we absolutely do not want that. We only want to target within the San Francisco Bay Area. So that's why we choose the right setting, which is presence, people in or regularly in your targeted location. So by choosing this option, it's people in or regularly in. So if they commute to the Bay Area very often, but they don't live in the Bay Area, then they could potentially see your ad. But the chances of someone in Malaysia falling in here, it's zero because someone from Malaysia is not going to regularly be in the Bay Area that often. And then lastly, well, actually not lastly, here we have exclude. We want to exclude presence people in your excluded location. That's completely fine. And then we're going to opt in here. And then after that for languages, just make sure whatever language you want to keep it in. Is it English, Spanish? Uh, in this case, um, I'm keeping it to English. And then budget, you can adjust your budget. It's a daily budget. Um, sometimes it can be more. Sometimes it can be less, but Google can spend um, up to three times the budget that you set. Uh, so that's just something that you have to pay attention to as well. Um, but it won't go over your daily budget times 30.5, I believe. Um, so, uh, so that's pretty much what the actual budget setting um, is. And then after that, for bidding, for a campaign like this, because it doesn't have a lot of leads yet, typically when I start out, I'll keep things in manual bidding. Um, and I know that um, there's a lot of people that are really um, uh, that are really on board with smart bidding. But just for this type of campaign, because it's B2B and we're only targeting a small area, there's not a lot of traffic. I keep it to manual CPC, but there's a lot of different options here. And when you when you typically choose manual CPC, it will also show you and opt you into enhanced CPC. So I would actually recommend not to have enhanced CPC and just keep it at manual. But then there's all these other automated bid strategies you can choose if you wanted to. If you have a higher volume of leads or conversion data, these other options might be a better fit for you. But for the beginning of a campaign, I typically just keep it at a manual cost per click until I can get to a point where I'm achieving a higher than average cost per click and then I'll start changing it over to an automated bidding strategy. After that, um, we have the start and end dates. So you can choose the start, eight, start date, end date, um, and then it will turn the campaign off if this is not an evergreen campaign. I never really make any updates on that front. And then lastly here, let's look at the additional settings. Um, so here, ver uh, value rules, don't worry about that. You don't need to set any rules uh, per se in this, in this area. And then ad rotation, optimize, prefer the best performing ads. And then leads, lead form setting, you don't need that if you don't have a lead form set up. Um, campaign URL options, you don't need that. Dynamic search ads, you don't need that. IP exclusions, you don't need that unless you already have a list of IPs that you don't want to target or you want to block out from your campaign from the get-go. Now, if you have any questions on the search 
set settings um, within the campaigns area, please go ahead and drop them below. I'm happy to answer them. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I post videos about Google Ads lead generation every week and look forward to seeing you in the next one.